What's up everybody? So today I'm going to share my story and how I became a web designer, web developer, and someone who works with WordPress design and development. Alright, so I came up with the idea for the video the other day when I was cleaning out my garage and I came across some of the books that I used when I first started getting started with uh, web design and development. So here I have a book on HTML and CSS, I have some books here on JavaScript and jQuery, I have a couple of books here on PHP and MySQL. And then these two books are on regular expressions, and this one's on network administration. It's a new one, and I'm on my second reading of this one. On my iPad, I have a whole entire library as well, and these are the books that I use on that one. So I have books on search engine optimization, Linux server administration, regular expressions. I have books on database uh, design. I have a lot of books on PHP, uh, books on HC access. I have a couple of books on JavaScript and jQuery, a bunch of books on Linux and the Linux command line. I have a bunch of books on WordPress as well. I have a book here on Git, which is really good. I have another one on SSH. And then this one, this is the book called Think Like a Programmer. That's important because you can learn the syntax of a coding language, uh, but you still need to learn how to think like a programmer in order to develop highly functional websites. So that's a great book to to check out. So that's my Kindle library and these are some of the books that I use to learn how to design websites. I also did use um, some online training communities like lynda.com, Team Treehouse, and Pluralsight and they have great libraries as well. But when I first started designing websites I started with the regular books and I did it while I had a different job. I was in a different stage in my life. I was previously in the New York City Council and I got elected at the age of 21. I was the youngest ever majority of the New York City Council and I served there for 12 years. But in the City Council there's term limits. When I approached my final term in City Hall, I had to make a choice. What was I gonna do next with my life? And that's when I chose to become a real estate agent. So I joined Remax, and then later on I joined Keller Williams, and they're both great companies. Uh, but I wanted to have a website because I realized that people are searching for real estate online. So I figured it's an advantage to have a website. So I approached a couple of designers and developers, and I asked them, how much would it cost to develop a website? So at the time, and mind you, this is years ago, uh, I was quoted about $20,000 in order to design and develop a website. So to me, that was a lot of money. You know, $20,000 for a website, that's a pretty hefty price tag. So I decided that I was going to code the website myself. Now, mind you, I had no experience whatsoever, but I figured, you know, how hard can it be, right? It really can't be that difficult, you know, to code a website. I mean, a lot of kids were doing it. But I got my first book on HTML and CSS, and I started reading it, and I started to learn and study the wrong way because I did it whenever I had time. I would read on the train whenever I was going downtown. I would read the book whenever I had a little bit of time in between meetings or during lunch. You know, I would read the book whenever I had a chance, and that's not the best way to do it. My recommendation to people just getting started with designing and developing websites is to do it in front of a computer, in front of the monitor, so you can practice what you're learning. But I did what I could with the time that I had. And I was working full time as a New York City Council member and I was also doing real estate on the side. So I figured if it takes me a couple of months, if it takes me a year, it's okay. So anyway, a couple of months later, I finally got my first website online. And I did it with just HTML and just CSS. And let me tell you, it was a basic website. There was no JavaScript, no server-side programming language, and it was simple. And it did not look good. It was horrible. But the thing is, I coded the website myself. And to me, that was a huge accomplishment because a year earlier, I would never even think about the fact that I would be able to code a website. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? So I kept on reading, I kept on learning, and I went down the rabbit hole because I realized there was a lot more languages that I needed to learn if I wanted to have a really fully functional uh, website that would feature the properties online. So I learned JavaScript, I learned PHP, I learned MySQL, and later on, you know, I discovered WordPress and then I started working with WordPress itself. That took me some time, that took me several years, and you know, but I did it and I was able to transition. Once I was out of the council, I was able to transition to become a full-time 
web designer and web developer. And now I focus with WordPress. And then a lot of people were asking, they're like, all right, so great. So you studied web design and development for years. You're self-taught. What computer did you start off with? What operating system uh, should you be using if you want to learn how to develop and design websites? And my answer is it really doesn't matter because any operating system, any computer, as long as it's relatively modern, you'll be able to code on that. It doesn't matter if it's something as small as the MacBook Air. And this is a 2012 MacBook Air. It's not a new one. It's a 2012 MacBook Air. And this little laptop right here is powerful enough to design and develop websites. Because you're going to find that you don't need that many resources when you're doing a website. All you need is something that can you know, work with a text editor. And if you need a local server, as long as you have a couple of gigabytes of RAM, at least four, you're going to be fine. So this little uh, MacBook Air does the job. And this is great because it's so small. You can carry this anywhere. You can throw it into your backpack. You can take it to the coffee shop. You can even use this on the airplane. For now, until they decide that you can no longer you know, open up a laptop. Uh, but for now, you can use something as small as this on an airplane or in a coffee shop or in the library or wherever you want. You can even power a secondary monitor you know, with this older 2012 MacBook Air. So that's that. You could also use a Windows-based laptop. So this one, this is a Windows-based laptop. It's a Lenovo. And this one I think is uh, maybe a 2012 or 2013 or something like that. But anyway, so this one is also great. It's a Windows-based laptop. It uh, has um, really good specs for the time. Right now, you could probably get a real cheap for this year, uh, the year this one came out. But, you know, this would do the job just great. And to be honest with you, I actually took off Windows off of this computer because I wanted to put a Linux distribution on it as the only operating system. So I did take off Windows, and I put Ubuntu on it at first, and now it's running uh, Linux Mint. And it runs great. So... This one's a Linux-based computer and it does the job, all right? Or you can go with something a little bit more powerful like this. Now, this is a MacBook Pro. It's a 2011, so it's an older model. You can see it still has that DVD drive right there. And it has a bunch of ports, unlike the new MacBook Pro. And it's very thick. This thing is heavy. You know, when you start looking at modern laptops, this is a very heavy device. But, you know, I, I spec'd it out. I swapped out the 4 gigabytes of RAM and I put in, uh, myself, I put in 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM in this and I put in a very fast SSD. And I had to swap out the logic board because there was an issue with the graphics card on this particular model. So I swapped that out. So this thing's like brand new. It's a 2011 and it still works. This thing works like a charm. Alright, so that's the MacBook Pro. You can get a new one, and they cost a pretty penny. And back of me over here, this is my custom-built PC in back of the monitors. I have a computer here that I built because I wanted to do something more than just web design and development. So I spec'd it out with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I put in a 980 Ti graphics card. It's on an Asus Deluxe 2 motherboard, and it is running very fast SSDs and has a strong power supply. And all that, all that power, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and all that, is still cheaper than a brand new MacBook Pro fully spec'd out. Now, again, this is a desktop. This is a custom-built desktop. So it's stuck here. It's not going to be traveling anywhere with me, right? But, you know, you kind of lose that with a desktop and a custom-built PC. You lose that mobility. But it has a lot of power to it. And I had other laptops anyway, so there's really no need... You know, for me to upgrade those even though that's a 2011 and those are like 2012 and 2013 or something like that uh, so this is my beast of a machine I built it out and it has a lot of power it has a triple monitor setup and for me this is a very efficient way to code because on one screen I can have the documentation page of the coding language I'm working with open and then on the second screen, I can have my text editor, and I use the atom.io text editor for that one. And on the third screen, I can have a local copy of my website up so I can see the changes in real time. So this is a great environment to work with. And to be honest with you, most modern laptops 
they can power two external monitors. So you can have a triple monitor with the built-in display of the laptop and two externals. Just look at the specifications of your laptop and you're going to probably find that you can do the same thing. So you can definitely emulate this and you probably don't even need to buy anything new. You could even code on something like your iPhone. And a lot of people don't even think about this, but I'm going to show you an app now. I use the Textastic app and it's a great application. So I have a WordPress theme that I custom built and I have the folders and files here. So I could open up a file and I can see my code. I can see my code and I can edit my code right on my phone. Now this is great because you can either just code something completely from scratch on your phone itself with a text editor like this one, or you could just review your code that you want to see if there's anything you want to refactor. And what's good about this is you could upload it via FTP to your web server. Uh, you could upload it to Dropbox or you could upload it to Google Drive or OneDrive or any of your cloud storage devices. So that's on your iPhone. So that goes to show you, it doesn't matter what operating system you're using, doesn't really matter what computer you're using, you can find a way to code on virtually any type of computer, whether it's a desktop custom built PC, whether it's a laptop that's based on Mac or Windows, or if it's a Linux based laptop. It doesn't matter. Even your phones or your tablets are great places for you to code. So that's the tools that I use. I, I learned to code by reading books, which is a very old school way. I also have my Kindle eBooks over here as well. I did also learn on other platforms like Linda and Pluralsight and Team Treehouse. And there's a bunch of channels on YouTube itself uh, that will teach you how to design and develop websites. And let me tell you, there's some amazing instructors here on YouTube that really do a great job at uh, demonstrating how to code websites. So these are the tools that I used and this is how I learned to become a web designer and a web developer. But my recommendation is if you're brand new to this and you're a brand new designer, brand new developer, you're just getting started, just use what you have. If you have a laptop, use your laptop. It doesn't matter if it's Windows based, doesn't matter if it's a Mac OS laptop, or it doesn't matter if it's a Linux laptop. They sell them like that. You can buy a Dell Linux laptop itself. Uh, just use what you have and just, you know, find the best way for you to learn. Everybody's different. You know, I learn with books. Uh, you can learn some different way. You can find a mentor. You can find somebody that can teach you or you can just use any of the online platforms. Just make sure you dedicate time to it because what happens in the beginning is a lot of people get frustrated because they don't know how long it's going to take for them to learn to create a website. Take it step by step. Learn the HTML, learn the CSS, learn JavaScript, and take it as far as you want it to go. There's a lot of developers and coders that just specialize within one language, and then there's people who want to be a full stack programmer. So everybody's different, and sometimes a specialist is the ideal candidate if you're going to work in a corporate type environment. And sometimes you're going to find that as a freelancer, you kind of need to be a full stack because there's not many people just buying an HTML template or just a CSS template. If you want to work in the corporate world, if you want to work for a large company, then you're going to find that it's best to be a well-versed and fully knowledgeable on one specific language. Now, if you want to be a freelancer, you can, you're going to kind of have to be a full stacker. You're going to have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, or Python, and MySQL, which is the database. So, because you're going to want to make sure that you can offer a full range of services uh, to your prospective clients. And that goes to my next segment. It's important that you develop a network. It's important that you develop a following because even if you're the most skilled programmer, coder in the world, if you have nobody that knows about your skills or what type of product you can create, what type of website you can put together for them, it's going to be kind of tough for you to have a business. So you're going to want to develop a following, whether it's via social media or if it's going to like meetups or getting involved in your local community with the Chamber of Commerce or some way. So that way you can have a healthy pipeline of clients, you know, making sure that you always have work. So give it time, learn your tools, you know, use what you have. If you're going to be working with a Mac or Windows or Linux, use the Atom text editor. It's free and it's open source. If you need a local web server when you're going to work with a dynamic server-side programming language, you're going to need something like MAMP, RAMP, or ZAMP. 
You can download code from wordpress.org. You can download themes, plugins, the core itself. And you can also download code from a place like uh, GitHub, which is a great repository of a bunch of different developers. And you can download their code and can analyze it. Give it time, you know, stay motivated and just realize that anybody can do this. If I could do it, you could do it. It doesn't matter if you're a kid living at home or if you're working a full-time job or if you're retired and just want to try something new. Anybody can learn how to design and develop websites. As long as you have the desire, as long as you have the capacity to learn, you can do it. So I'm going to finish off this video by introducing you to this book right here. It's an older book. Um, you can tell because the page is kind of yellow. But it's by Richard Bronson. And he says, just do it. That's it. The premise of this book right here is no matter what's happening in life, there's going to be a million reasons why you feel you cannot do something. And there's going to be a million excuses. But as long as you have the desire and the motivation and the ability to learn, you can do anything you want. And that's what happened with me. You know, I was in a different place. I was in the city council. I was doing real estate and I wanted to have a website. So what did I do? After figuring out that it cost thousands of dollars to get one professionally designed and developed, I decided to teach myself how to design and develop websites. And again, you know, it wasn't uh, the Mona Lisa websites when I first started off, but I did it. And then I built upon my skill set from there. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I just wanted to share with you my path and my journey and how I got here to be a web designer, web developer, and someone who works with WordPress. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I'll give you more tips and tricks on how to build a website, manage a website, and make your website succeed online. All right, so again, thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.